A very warm welcome to the Royal Armouries Museum and indeed this war gallery. My name is Andrew and I'm a member of the Live Interpretation Department. Our job is to bring to life the arms and the armour in the collection and indeed different periods of history. Now, this afternoon I'm in the attire of an English longboat. However, one from the Walls of the Roses. And today I am a Lancastrian archer at that. And today I shall be telling you all about one of the major battles during the Wars of the Roses, and that being the Battle of Towton. Now this occurred in 1461 on the 29th of March. Now the battlefield itself is about 10 to 12 miles from here. And it was the scene of one of the bloodiest battles ever fought on British soil. So much so, an estimated 28,000 men perished at the Battle of Towton and lay in just a four acre squared area of farmland. As you can imagine, that's an enormous volume of dead in a very small area. There's also a river that runs right through the middle of the battlefield, now known as Cock Beck. Now this was reputed to have run red for some three days after the battle from the blood of all the perished. So, quick history lesson. We've got Edward, Duke of York, who set himself up an army known as the Yorkists. And then we had Edward VI at this stage, who'd set himself up an army known as the Lancastrians. Now they met an awful lot over a good 30 year plus period. However, the Battle of Towton was perhaps one of the biggest turning points during the Wars of the Roses where the Lancastrians lost. So today, I'm going to use a piece of theater and show you an active piece through the eyes of one of the Lancastrian archers from the losing side at the Battle of Town. I shall be telling you about the events leading up to the battle, the battle itself, and your stuff. And the coal comes to fall in. 
Well, it'd be too cold for them Yorkies to sleep, I suppose. So, we got a quick blessing on priest. Look, well, cos it was Palm Sunday like. And then we marched out of camp. And I tell you, you haven't got time to think, have you? God no. You just do what you're told, don't you? Do what you're trained to do. I do. All them fellas shouting and screaming and all them drums banging. You know all that stuff you need to get an army into place. Well, you, you might not need it. But it stops you thinking, do it? Stops that little devil churning in your Of course, it's archers up front, as usual, starting the fighting as usual. Mind you, that's what we're paid for, isn't it? In fact, that's what we're trained from boyhood for. Hey, it would be Dad who taught me how to shoot. Oh, I did not tell you. He was a cracking woman, would be Dad. It really says. So, when they're shooting a ball, you don't have to shoot your arms, do you? You need to use your whole body. Use your whole body. Ah, and as I got bigger, well, we both say got bigger and all. Oh, I were a cracking ball, my mummy dad. That is until the Yorkies got it. You see, that's how we're all trained round here. By his dad's. You know, taught to shoot properly, taught to fight properly at all. You see, a man, he'll never shoot properly. Not unless he's been brought up to it. The only thing is, there were too many of us brought up to it on that day, weren't there? Hey, and I mean on both sides. So really, well, really it was just plain murder. And then the battle. No quarter! That went against us from the start. Because the Yorkies, well they got the high ground, didn't they? And with the wind behind them. And then as soon as we started shooting, that was it then. I mean, you are not going to believe this. Soon as we started shooting, it started snowing. Snowing in March. Blowing massive flakes right in your face, right in your eyes. I mean, like a blizzard. We couldn't see a thing. Hey, we couldn't even see them. Let alone Vanda's range. And then as soon as we started loosing our arrows, that was it then. Because then their arrows come, coming in as out of the snow. Oh yeah, they could see all right. Oh yeah, I mean, they've got their range all right. So we shot all our arrows, and we took all we could take, and then we ran. You know, man to man, face to face. The only thing is, we're running, right, happen, some of us in a flat out spring, and we get about 20 yards off them, and suddenly we just run past rows upon rows of our own hours, just stuck. Harmlessly in the frozen mud, 20 yards off. But we haven't got our range, have we? 
Like I said, you couldn't see nothing for all that snow on that. Anyway, once we reached them, that was it then. Then we went up. Blood crazy we were. Demented. Hacking at them. There was blood spurting everywhere. Fellas were, were shouting and screaming. There was this bloke next to me. And he gets this dagger and breaks his arm. Stay close to the standards. Never more than four paces from the standard. Oh yeah, fat chance of that. I mean, what in that? Mess. Riding bodies. You've got to understand. Right in a battle situation, well, you're that tightly pressed the others. And I mean hundreds of them all round you. I mean, you can't even use your limbs properly to fight. There's fellas behind you, fighting over the top of you. And there's fellas in front of you. Well, they've been whacked with these weapons and that. My oh, God, the scream. Like screams I've never heard before. Primal screams, you know. There's blood coming up into air. I mean, God, you can't even find your foot. You know, because where are you trying to stand? God, it's just a mess. A mess of broken, dying men. Everywhere. Well, this bloke on the other side of it, and he gets this polite right in his face. I'm not killing, no, but he stumbles and falls, and well, then he just gets trampled on. And I mean trampled on. I think we're dead better, eh? I mean, we was pleased to fall back. You know, when then their arms come forward. Hey, hey, cause they're tough, them are. You know, well equipped, fully armoured, proper fighting men. Them Yorkist archers were no match for our lads. Only them their men at arms come forward, didn't they? Do we? Bloody battle. We fought them for hours. I mean, for hours we were there. Fighting them, hacking at them, hey, but pushing them back. Always pushing them back. Until about midday. When up on our flank, come the white lion and the Duke of North. With thousands of extra Yorkies, reinforcements. God, I'll not forget that day till the day I die. Which may very well be today. Well, all them extra Yorkies turned, you know, I mean, that just sealed it for us. You know, they just turned it into a running man. I'm telling you, that the Yorkies. My God, they just sweat through us. You know, like a flood tide. And that is when Edward's horsemen turned up. Horsemen? Crickers. That's what we call them. Crickers. Do you know what prickers are? Crickers? They get on the horses. And as you're running away, they gallop after you with lances and swords, war hammers, maces, crack you out back of the head as you're running off. As you're making your way up, how cowardice is that, eh? Anyway, Rickers, as soon as I saw them come running, well, I ran myself. I ran for all I was worth. I ran toward that river. Because you see, rumour had it, it was a boy. Hey, but as soon as I come stumbling down that steep banking, 
I just come across hundreds of men trying to get across. There was no bridge, you see. Well, all lots are back. Well, they're all pushing and shoving, trying to get away from prickers. Hey, you know, that's a pack. Well, they're all pushing and shoving. Well, them are front, you see, for all the weapons and their armour on and that. They're all just falling into that water and then they're sinking and drowning. And even though I was one of the last to get there, well, I won it first to get across. May God forgive me, because I crossed that blood red stream using stepping stones. Stepping stones of human bodies. A bridge made of corpses. And I ran across it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. 